Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. And for discounts and deals for new accounts on FanDuel.com, the promo code is Dwyer777. Now first, let me issue a warning, especially for this video. This is not a fan club site, right? I'm not trying to be anyone's friend. I'm not trying to get interviews with fighters, right? Rather, this is a gambler's advisory site. There is a difference. Right now, I haven't talked much about Jermal Charlo. A champion at 154 pounds and the brother of Jermel Charlo, who might also be special, who also has a belt at 154. Let's give this a shot. Now I'm going to compare Jermel Charlo to some Hall of Famers, both to measure his strengths and his weaknesses. Right? Then I'm going to talk about Julian Williams. The guy who Charlo is rumored to be fighting next. The fight hasn't yet been formally announced. Now let me say this about Jermal Charlo, who calls himself the Hitman. Right? He's big. A six-footer. Understand that makes him four inches taller, at least four inches taller, than Canelo. Right? It makes him about four inches taller than Floyd Mayweather. In other words, he's Andre Ward's height, three divisions down from Ward, right? Ward's fighting at light heavy. Ward's six feet. Charlo is six feet. In fact, might even be more than three, right? Light heavy to super middle, to middleweight. Then you have Charlo's division, right? So he's big for the division. There's a lot of hype about him. He's unbeaten. Heavy punch. He's the Charlo brother with the punch. But that means there's a lot to hide. Right? You're six feet tall. You have to hide above the waist. Right? So, even with a punch, he needs to be elusive. If he's not elusive, He's going to be involved in a lot of shootouts. And this is championship level boxing. He's not going to win all of them. Right? So, he calls himself the Hitman. Let's talk about the Hitman. Not Ricky Hatton. I'm talking about the Hitman. The man who earned the name. Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Now understand, Charlo has a great jab like the Hitman, right? To be elusive, you need to have a jab or the ability to hide your body, right? Something to protect yourself. Something to keep the other guy off you. Make it hard for the other guy to find you. Charlo has a great jab. But, there are going to be a lot of buts in this video, folks. But... He also needs a back foot, which Thomas Hearns had, right? Look at the mid to later rounds of Hearns Leonard one, right? Thomas Hearns on his back foot, right? That jab has to be married to movement if you're really going to be elusive, right? Let's think it through. You also have to know how to frame the jab. So the jab is a problem. It's not something that just sets the table. No, it's something that protects you. Think Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Let's also talk about his upper body. Right? Smaller fighters like Mike Tyson, Bob and Weave, Joe Fraser. Right? These are guys with punches. 
they understood at the championship level you can't stand upright you can't show too much of yourself even when you have a punch so these guys hid their upper bodies by bobbing and weaving we called it so understand Charlo in his 20s today is a hunter he's on his front foot he doesn't really have to get on his back foot he fights a lot of fight in this guy he fights as if he's invincible right he has we'll call it an Emmanuel Stewart level jab right Hearns Klitschko but he doesn't have the Emmanuel Stewart patience with the jab in other words you see the jab this is almost Joseph Parker situation right you see the jab he throws it a lot but in fights where the other guy can't get through his jab somehow Charlo in the middle of the fight is throwing big other punches right he's not coasting on his jab and when Charlo's throwing the other punches in my opinion and again this is for gamblers in my opinion he doesn't really hide his upper body right he doesn't bob and weave right he doesn't keep you outside the jab to the point where you can't hit him with counters so in my opinion he's going to be involved it's early in his career but he's going to be involved in a bunch of shootouts right his six foot frame is going to be in there getting a lot of fire back at him in my opinion he's going to be vulnerable too let me name a great fighter here who recently passed right he's in my thoughts he's going to be vulnerable to the Aaron Pryors of the world let's remember Aaron Pryor beat Thomas the Hitman Hearns in the amateurs and he's going to be vulnerable to the Marvin Haglers of the world who beat Hearns in the pros in other words guys who are willing to trade with you right who are willing to engage in the shootout once your jab construct goes out the window right if you have a jab and you don't have enough discipline to stay behind the jab there are going to be fights where the construct goes out the window right and it's in those fights when you encounter a guy who's shooting back at you who isn't there to box you who's there to fight you you're gonna have problems right I could have added the Lehman Brewsters of the world look at the first fight against Vladimir Klitschko Klitschko's jab goes out the window they start trading Klitschko loses his title another fight Klitschko Corey Sanders so fighters who can force a shootout who are not afraid to get hit might be able to open up Charlo in a way that could put the fight up in the air so the most important sentences of this video he is not the guy in my opinion who can keep you on the losing end of his construct right rather his game is gonna fall apart in my opinion when the bullets start flying and when they do boxing is gonna turn into fighting where any man can win let's talk about his style Charlo is a bit flat footed right in my opinion he's a bit 
too near to the pocket. Right? Now keep in mind, we're talking about a six-footer. When you look at the Charlo highlights, and I've placed a video of them in the comment section, or rather in my favorites folder here online, you're going to notice that he gets up on his opponent, and he's throwing a lot of punches. What you don't see is a guy using every inch of his frame to keep you away from him while he is banking rounds, right? So, he has defense, but he's not defensively blessed. He can be hit with counters. He fought Southpaw Austin Trout. That's an important fight you need to look at here on YouTube, right? Trout, from a Southpaw stance, Lands a bunch of right hands, in my opinion. Then Trout starts landing left hands. You'll notice that there are times where Trout is countering and landing flush, flush, on Charlo. Now, there's a height differential between the two guys. One would think that Charlo would have kept Trout, and Charlo throws a greater than average number of jabs. One would think that Charlo would have kept Trout away from him, right? We know Trout is dangerous. Trout beat Miguel Cotto, right? Trout went the distance with Canelo at a minimum. We could debate whether he won that fight, right? So you, you understand Trout's a handful. If you have the height advantage on Trout and you have a great jab, why not bank the rounds, keep Trout outside? What's Trout doing close enough to you to land the kind of counters that he landed in that fight? Right, let me just say, when the scoring's announced, you can tell the guys are both tense. Trout thought he won the fight. Right, just food for thought. So, let me say this too, when you're a tall fighter, you really do have to worry, especially when you're six feet, 154 pounds, right? We can see his ribs. You really have to worry about a guy getting inside and hitting your body, don't you? Now, because Charlo, in my opinion, is a bit upright, I'm left with the thought of whether he has the ability to take a lot of body shots. Now, this is 154. Canelo owns a share of the belt at 154. You just saw Canelo destroy Liam Smith off body shots predominantly. Right? Those body shots, they looked painful. You saw Smith hit the canvas off a body shot, rolling around on the canvas. Right Now, understand when the bullets start flying and you have a guy like Canelo who is one of the hardest punchers in the sport, in my opinion, who throws devastating body punches. We didn't leave the pocket when Shane Mosley, another heavy-handed guy, stepped in the pocket with him. Right? I, I wonder, right, if Charlo, who views himself as a knockout artist, gets inside on Canelo and Canelo fights small, bends his head, gets low, makes it hard for a six-foot guy to find him, and then starts going to Charlo's body. I wonder what Jamal is going to do. I know Jermel would move away. This isn't Jermel, this is Jermel, the power puncher. Right? He has great power. He has an excellent jab, he has an excellent short left. He has a great uppercut. What I like too is certain fighters, Vladimir Klitschko likes to touch you with his jab before throwing his right hand. This guy doesn't have that problem. He doesn't have that tell. 
right? Jamal Charlo can lead with his straight right hand, right? He's an offensive juggernaut. He's very accurate. But one of the reasons he's very accurate is he's up on you and he's throwing punches at short range. In other words, a lot of his game looks a lot like Marvin Hagler's. The difference, though, is that Marvin Hagler was shorter, right? Marvin Hagler would put his head in the way, right? He had a bald head like me, and he'd stick his head in your face. He'd have his head under your chin. Then he'd be going to work. Can a tall guy get away with Marvin Hagler's style? I wonder. Now let's talk about a fighter I'm very impressed with. That's the next opponent for Jamal Charlo. I think this fight is a dangerous fight. Let me be upfront here. Right? I've looked at the film. I see the power of Charlo. He hits harder. He has a great jab, right? His highlights are filled with guys getting hit and then looking confused and falling to the canvas. They can't believe how hard Charlo hits. But Julian J. Rock Williams, in my opinion, has better ring awareness. What do I mean by that? He seems to be a guy who's aware of where his opponent's going to be. He seems to be a guy who, no matter what's happening in the fight, right, he could just hurt a guy. The Freddie Hernandez fight knocks Freddie Hernandez down in the opening seconds of the bout, it seems. But yet, doesn't panic, doesn't get too excited. Doesn't overextend himself. He knows what Hernandez is going to do. He knows intuitively to move after he throws punches. He seems to know where he is and where his opponent is better than Charlo. I don't see the moments in a J-Rock Williams fight where his upper body looks open for counters like I see in Charlo fights. I think J-Rock Williams creates the better angles. Understand, boxing at the highest level is all about angles, right? And J-Rock knows how to, you know, keep you reaching for him, right? His game is a game where he hits you, he moves, he goes low, you're reaching low. Suddenly he's high, he's over here, right? This is while he's attacking you. This is a guy who doesn't operate in straight lines right he keeps you guessing this is as he's opening up on you in other words he's more three-dimensional than charlo i feel he can fight lower than charlo which might be the way to beat charlo right williams has that skill philly fighters seem to intuitively have i don't know what's going on in philly but all of these guys seem to just know how to fight. Right? It, you know, you look at Philly fighters, and you don't have to be dazzled by the guy's hand speed or the guy's punching power, right, to be impressed by the guy because the guy just knows where to be and when to be at a spot in the ring. Right? J Rock has a pretty good jab. Very nice jab, right? But, unlike Charlo, J-Rock seems to know how to always make his jab an issue. So, when this fight is announced, I believe you're going to have value. It's dangerous, folks. But I believe you're going to have value on the underdog here. Both guys are unbeaten. J-Rock does have a draw on his record. Well, let me just say, I think Julian Williams is a live underdog against Jamal Charlo. Right? The bet I'm recommending here, because of Charlo's power, 
is that you take Williams to win the fight, hedged with Charlo by stoppage. Right? Charlo hits hard. But I believe Williams is the better technician in the ring. I think Williams is the better boxer. Right? I get the feeling that Williams will know how to get low on Charlo, avoid his jab, because Williams is a master at spacing, get under the jab. I believe Williams will be able to get inside and hit Charlo with some body shots, keep Charlo turning. Right Now the question is whether there comes a moment in this fight where Charlo is able to turn over a right hand. He has a devastating right hand. Right, whether he's able to turn over a right hand, hit Williams on the button, and drop him. Right, but understand, understand, even if he does that, I'm convinced that Williams is a better fighter to the extent that Williams could suffer a knockdown, in my opinion, and still win the decision. Now, I know this is not what everyone is saying, and I understand there's a buzz on Jamal Charlo, and I'll concede, as I said earlier, he has an Emmanuel Stewart level jab, right? He has a great jab. I just don't think Charlo knows how to put it all together, like J-Rock Williams, right? I just think Williams moves better than Charlo. He's a harder person to find in the ring. Right? Williams fights like a man who knows he could lose. Charlo fights like a man who thinks he can't. Put me among those who appreciates when a fighter has the awareness that the sport is competitive. Any man can lose on any given point in time. And the fighter, because of that recognition, has developed defensive skills and a technique of not staying stationary in the pocket. So to sum up, I'm impressed by both fighters. At this stage of their careers, I'm more impressed by the underdog here, Julian J. Rock Williams, right? This guy is a prototypical Philly fighter, right? You look at him in the ring and it's not like his punches are dramatic like Charlo's. But the guy just knows how to package them in a way and box in a way where he's hitting you, he's keeping you guessing, he's keeping you on the defensive. I think this guy might be a complete diamond in the rough, right? If I'm right about this guy, really he belongs in the conversation of, let's say, one of the 10 best fighters in the sport pound for pound. I'm going with the underdog in this fight, Julian J. Rock Williams hedged with Charlo by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.